185 miles south of the Giza pyramids, a Franco-British archaeological mission, with the help of 100 Egyptian workers, is possibly about to make a major discovery. We are at Hatnub, one of the oldest calcite quarries in the world. This is where the great pharaohs went to look for a hard and crystalline stone that is also called Egyptian alabaster. Today, there is no alabaster left in this quarry, which was totally depleted and abandoned in ancient times. Clearing all the rubble and sand accumulated over the past 2,000 years is a gargantuan task. And here, there is no tomb or funerary treasure to find. So why put so much effort into it? What Yanis Gourdon's team has begun to find on the site could revolutionize our understanding of the major pharaonic construction sites particularly that of the Khufu Pyramid. Because here we know that they extracted and hauled a huge alabaster block to make a 58-ton statue for a pharaoh. While they were clearing the quarry in search of new inscriptions, Egyptologists found steps and holes carved into the ramp. They think that these holes were used to wedge huge wooden poles that were part of a very ingenious towing system. They have one month to clear as much gravel as possible, around 6,000 tons, to see if there are similar holes on the right side of the ramp and lower down in the quarry. But how can we date this ramp carved into the rock inside a quarry that was used for almost 3,000 years? How can we be sure that it was used in Khufu's era? What helps them are the hundreds and hundreds of inscriptions left there by expedition leaders who came all the way here to extract the sacred alabaster. So let's have a look on the Hufu's inscriptions. Yeah. Roland Enmark and Yanis Gourdon are experts in hieroglyphics. By listing all the inscriptions in the quarry, they have identified two cartouches from Pharaoh Khufu. Even if some of the hieroglyphs have been destroyed, they can still decipher Khufu's royal name. Yep, there's definitely a vase there. And the quail. Yes, the quail chick and the viper. Yes. It is the same signature that has been found all around the Wadi El Jarf site and in Mera's papyri. Yanis Gourdon and Roland Enmark decided to dig a trench under a second Khufu cartouche that's also damaged to access the bottom of the towpass to see if it's possible to link the Khufu cartouche with the ramp. A month later, the team has been able to clear the top of the ramp entirely and a large part at the bottom of the quarry where the Khufu cartouche is located. Were they able to find the clues and information they were looking for? The amount of rubble and sand deposited here over the past 2,000 years is much greater than they had estimated. After digging down about 30 feet under the Khufu cartouche, they have finally reached the base of the ramp. Yanis and Olivier Lavigne are happy to find another hole carved into the rock that's similar to the one found at the top of the ramp. Yes, we've got a new structure here. Here there are some nice tool marks. So this means that everything was cut in one go, in one piece. The wall, then the steps, and then after, the holes for the poles. So now the oldest inscriptions on these walls... Yeah, that's Khufu. 
which means that the whole thing was made at the latest during Khufu's era. Thanks to these discoveries, they believe that the ramp must have been created during Khufu's time or even before. And at the top of the ramp, just as they had hoped, they uncovered more pole holes and lots of tool marks. Olivier measured all the tool marks the workers left in the quarry, especially on the ramp and the holes and walls next to it. He found the same marks everywhere. Here, apparently, the same teams that arrived on the site and cut this wall also carved the steps and the holes for the poles in that order. In no other quarry have these types of elements been found. A ramp at a 20 or 25 percent grade or even more, depending on the location. And on the sides, there are stairs with holes cut into the rock. What were these holes used for? How did this ramp work? Can it provide new clues about the construction of the pyramids and the ramp system used at the time? Olivier Lavigne has analyzed all these clues and developed a hypothesis. So here we have a pole hole. The wall in front of me is vertical, so the pole was placed here, a large circular pole. You have to imagine it because it's rather large. And here we really have a structure that enables, when a big block gets to the towing path, to have teams above pulling the block and others below with ropes wrapped around the poles here and who are able, pulling like this, to make the block go up again. They take the ropes and pull towards the bottom and that's what actually makes the block move up. Behind here, there's a big structure, a crossbar that goes here, that ties, that dovetails the pole to wedge it just behind, because behind here, the hole is a little slanted. It's not easy to make a vertical hole with this kind of tool, and there's another hole here that makes a strut and arrives here in the upper part, which supports the upper part of the pole to prevent it from tilting. Here you need a log, a tree trunk that's very smooth and quite circular, so that the rope can easily slide around it. They would have used mud, silt from the Nile, to lubricate the ramp and slide the block, eliminating friction as much as possible. They could move very large blocks up this towpath. There's a story about a 58-ton colossus that came out of an alabaster quarry like this one, and that could have been possible here. So as the block advanced, the teams above would have positioned the ropes ahead of time on the next poles so that the block would have moved forward as smoothly as possible. According to Olivier, this ramp system could have been adapted to the Pyramid of Khufu, 